Hello, Western Civ 105. Uh, here I am in Siem Reap, Cambodia, <laughs> in my room. It's very interesting mural. Um, I uh, didn't sleep well because of being tore up by mosquitoes. Uh, this has happened to me when I was in Thailand. They love me. And I think it just got bit again, and I've been spraying some, like nuclear weapon destruction things on my body hoping that they'll this thing here it can also um protect you from leeches this is, this is yeah anyhow and it's so hot it's so hot wow i grew up in the central valley i know how how hot summers can be but man this is hot so I've been hiding in this room for a bit, and uh, maybe tonight I'll go brave uh, uh, the city. I, I went out a little bit this morning, but whoa. Anyhow, uh, I, I wanted to just say a few things because this week I think is extremely important. Um, covering the refugee crisis and uh, what that implies for Europe. When I was in Europe, and I spent almost three months there a few months ago, uh, uh, mainly I was in the Netherlands, but I was also in Iceland and Denmark and Sweden and Germany and uh, Belgium. And, you know, I, I, I think that the whole, the, the topic of the refugee crisis is the topic there. And part of the crisis that many Europeans that I've met uh, don't feel that the crisis is necessarily from the refugees but the way that people are reacting about the refugees if you if you feel me um when i was in the netherlands uh i i was staying with uh, a, um a f somebody that i've known for many years and she uh, had somebody deliver uh from a, like a kind of salvation army uh place a a, a couch and oh my God, the steps, the stairs and the staircases in the Netherlands. I don't know if anybody, if, if you just, those, those are, and I didn't envy these guys having to bring that up. Anyhow, uh, there were two refugees from Syria and I got to talk to them a little bit. And uh, um, one guy didn't really know any English and I, I know a decent amount of Arabic. I'm not fluent, but uh, we were able to talk a little. And uh, great guys, they're working at consignment shop. Uh, I had um, a guy that would cut my hair. He was uh, also a Syrian refugee. And uh, we had some really interesting discussions about uh, the state of the world and peace. And, you know, he wants to go back. He said, he said you know, you speak good Arabic. And he, says, and he said, you come to my country. When the war is over, we fix it up. I, you know, uh, it's, you'll love it. You'll love it. And, you know, it made me happy and sad. What was, hap what, what, what it was good to know is that there was some optimism about uh, people that are there that could go back and rebuild their country. But sad that this is even the state of affairs, the way that things need to be. Well, I mean, not they don't need to be, but the way that they are. And, you know, there's some enclaves um, where there are, uh, you know, in Sweden, I was going to actually kind of do my own personal investigation into Malmo. I was very close to Malmo. I didn't get to see, um, I think, you know, for Sweden, they took on a disproportionate amount of Iraqi refugees. And um, that's been hard on everybody. Um, by the way, uh, why, why are they, you know, where, where do these refugees come from? Iraq, after the war, that was supposed to be, you know, it was called Operation Iraqi Freedom. And several million people turned into refugees and uh, are now in Europe. And the United States refuses to take in Iraqi refugees for the most part. Um, interesting. Anyhow, uh, you can have your opinion about everyone on that. Um, the bottom line is this uh, section will at least give you... I think an educated, nuanced perspective about what's at stake and what's going on. And um, it, it also shows you the links of so many of the things that we covered uh, uh, in this class.
the ideologies and the histories of war and so on. And um, I've already graded some of your assignments. When I talk about looking at the Casablanca film clip at the end, and why do you think I have you watch it? I just want to drop a hint for you. Where is Casablanca? And think about, watch the clip. This is based on a true uh, uh, history, that part of Europe in relation to Northern Africa. Uh, uh, and, and Morocco is an Arabic speaking Muslim majority country. Okay? Um, Morocco is, which is where Casablanca is located. All right? And um, I just want to, uh, oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end on saying something. You know, here I am, I went to Vietnam for one stop. Uh, last night on my way to Cambodia. And here I am in Cambodia. And, you know, it's, it's kind of heavy for me to think about. You know, I, I went into uh, a stop off the airport in Cambodia. And there's all these lights, like, a, like you know, in Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh, named after uh, uh, the nationalist communist leader uh, um, that fought us, my country, United States. I'm sure a lot of us have relatives that, um, or, or relatives with friends, family that, that uh, fought in the Vietnam War. Well, you know, our country invaded, let's be real, Vietnam. And we also bombed the hell out of Vietnam because the Vietnamese wanted to embrace an ideology, at least a portion of the Vietnamese wanted to uh, embrace an ideology that our country said was not acceptable. That, that's the whole cause of the war. I mean, Vietnam didn't do a terrorist attack against the United States. Nothing like that. And that's what happened. And then here I'm in Cambodia. And I'm in an area where when I was born, some of the worst atrocities. And just look up Pol Pot and Khmer Rouge if you get a chance. It's heavy to think about what some of these nations have gone through and where they're at. And I look at the state of the world and, and what kind of the political trends going on now. And I just want to, quick, uh, yeah, <laughs> I should be quick to say, randomly years ago, I, I was uh, at, in, in the bookstore and I picked up this uh, store, this, this Christian missionary book or something. Don't know why. And I read this section and he, the writer was talking about freedom and liberty and talked about uh, a Christian girl in a communist country that wasn't free to be a Christian the way she wanted to. So she uh, goes late at night through a park to get to her church group. But while she walks alone late at night, she um, is safe from getting attacked by violent uh, criminals. But she's in danger when she gets to that house that maybe someone snitched on her and she could get arrested. Then the author compared and contrasted another Christian girl in London at night that's going to go late at night through a park to get to a Christian Bible study group. But while she goes through the park, she's in complete danger of being physically assaulted through rape, uh, mugging, uh, and, and certainly feeling like, like afraid. And she's only really safe until she gets to that meeting. And the author then kind of posed that question, well, then what's real freedom and liberty? Because... Well, do, do you all follow the, 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 the conundrum? And I thought, man, is this the kind of world that we're living in where, where there's only two options, that you have a strong state that cracks down on your personal freedoms but actually protects you from things like criminal uh, uh, activities and events, or for, for a society to be so fragmented and, and, and dangerous but allow you to do whatever you want? as long as you can make it safely from the park late at night. Um, I certainly hope that our world has more options than that. Um, but the Western world seems to be only thinking in those terms a lot of times, in my opinion. That's my thought. Look it. So that's all I'm going to say on this. I hope you're having a good week. We'll be in touch. Feel free to ask me questions on anything that you need. And uh, we're almost done.